today we are going to do some fencing and use some cool tools to be able to do that. Oh yes, you got to wait to see this. For one, we've got the Suzuki and trailer. Oh yeah, Max and Molly are here because the reason we need to do some fencing sooner rather than later is because the goats that we put in and built this temporary pen around the outside for them to eat off this rubbish land, they have cleared it. They need to move on. So we're going to actually do some fencing repairs on our fields so that they can actually get turned out into the main field. So as you can see, Max is there stood in the pen. They've actually cleared everything really, really well. Immediately everything's died off to assist them, but they're now on hay, which they're loving. You like them at hay, Barney? Yeah? And there's Billy. So I need to move them out to that field there. You can see the fences there and the things. So let's go and check them out and see what we need to do. Right, so Suzanne had an idea before we let them out into the big field is we should probably drench them. So we've got some sheep drench, but we don't have an applicator, so we're going to use a cow pole syringe. Oh, yes, exactly that. So we need to catch them now so we can drench them. And they love to have him being caught. Cool. So as soon as I said catching, they've gone. Get it right in the back of your throat. Okay, another one. Thanks. Right, so back to the job in hand, actually fencing. So let's check out what we need to do. Right, so this is the first gateway, which we have a problem, Max, don't we? Yeah, this post isn't very good. No, it's not very good at all. So we, we need to sort of... There is a gate, yeah, so we need to work it out. But we also need to make it so that you and Molly can get through it. Otherwise the goats aren't going to get fed, are they? Molly <laughs> doesn't feed them any. That's true. But we've got um, some rails there to sort out as well. But they can climb rails quite easily. And this fence down through here. We won't walk all the way down through, but as you can see there, we need to put in some posts just to prop it up for now. The biggest problem we got is the ha, ha up against our lawn, which is there, and our neighbour's lawn, which is there. Because you don't want to make the ha, -ha look awful by fencing right in front of it. So I think we're just going to run some electric through there temporarily and see how we get on with that. And then there's this bit over here. Yeah, so this bit definitely isn't stock proof. We need to do some work here because I just climbed right up on top of that bank. And that fence up there is, well, sheep proof, but I wouldn't say it's goat proof. So we're just going to run electric along the front of here for now until we actually get time to do the fences properly. And against the neighbour's garden is full of rabbits, but that's fine. Look, that rabbit going. <laughs> the rabbit was going real quick. It was. And yeah, this fence here is absolutely fine. We've got five foot six stakes in the ground with 8015 8, wire with two strands of barbed on the top, so that's fine. I need to prop it back up over here because the stakes have snapped off and rotten off in the bottom. And then through here is a bit of weld mesh on the lower side and a rail on the top, but it's only probably about three feet high. So I'm just gonna run a couple of strands of wire up through there just to bring the height of that up a little bit. But then the good news, between our woods and the lower end of our boundary, we have a deer fence, like a six foot, six foot six high fence all the way around the bottom of the perimeter. So it goes all the way around the lower side now. So I lost my helpers. They didn't walk all the way with me. They stayed up on the top. So I think we need to go to Mo Valley now and get some electric fencing stuff. And I've already got some stakes to be able to do the repairs. That should be fine. And yeah, we'll crack on. All right, we're in Moor Valley. Here's all the electric fencers and all the electric fencing gear. What have you got there, Maxie? Some 500 meter electric fencing wire. I get 500 meters, ideal. Mm -hmm. Good job. Max is there trying to buy everything at the moment. He wants everything we've got. But we've got our insulators, we've got our wire, and we've got our fencer. So hopefully that's all we need to do, does it? Yep, hopefully. So back at farm, I think it's now time to bang some stakes and do some repairs, and then we'll get on to putting the electric wire on everything. Ready, me? <sighs> Unbelievable. Can you do some work? No. <laughs> Get the old baler cord out of the way. Bring that stuff. I 
my Max is going to have a go with the Milwaukee oh. fencing stapler. My mum. Yes, mate. Oh. Nice. Oh. Love the Milwaukee fencing oh. stapler. Go on, then, Max. Oh. Another one in there. Yes, mate. He's on it. Good? Yeah. Right, when you're nailing into a rail and you don't want it to split, just bang over the top so it's not quite so sharp on the end. And it helps a lot. Bang on. Bang on. <laughs> right, so when you're joining a rail, if you go past your post and bang it in one nail, and then you just knock it out a bit, and then you can come down with your saw and cut down through there so you know exactly where the middle is rather than having to measure. Big tip. Well done, Mum. Right, bodging is going well. So, fence one nearly complete. Suzanne's just got to bang a few more staples in the other side on the wire just to hold up for now. Cool, let's move down to that bit. So I'm not sure if I said this at the beginning of the video, but this is all just sort of fencing repairs, just using what we've got to make good so we can actually put the goats in there. All these fences and hedges and everything on the property will all get done properly at some point because I love fencing properly. I used to do it as a job many years ago. So they will be done very, very nicely at some point, but this is just a bodge just to get it working so we can stock the fields. So where these posts have rotten off in the bottom, we're just gonna replace here some stakes in the side. The kids are here arguing behind us. Who's driving? Right, they're not allowed to go over five miles an hour, so no one panic. The pilot hole first, the ground is sodden here, so I'm gonna put in some five foot six, four inch posts in here and dry them in. It's hard underneath, very soft on top. You always wanna try and make your hole as deep as you want to make your stake. It makes it a lot easier for driving it in. There we go, so we've gone down that far. You getting Dave? I'm getting Dave. Dave the driver. Who's Dave? That's Dave. This is Dave, which he weighs probably 22, 24 kilos. Not like the toffee ones you buy now. This one is homemade with a nice bit of probably three quarter inch plate on the top. So yeah, he's a proper one. Right. When you do it, don't go and let it down. You won't bang anything like that. You're gonna force it, force it. Turn the fence up. So bang those posts in, just put two in, one there, one here. So now we can put that up there, staple that up against it, and that'll hold that bit up there. And then the other one will hold that up there. So that's enough again for temporary repair. Yes, the sun's coming out, Max. Nice. Makes a change. And the barb at the top, dude. Yes, mate. I think that'll be fine. Cool, it's holding it up. Perhaps if they bang their stakes in further, it would have made more sense. Either that or they cut the tops off because they can't bang them in deep enough, which is even funnier because it lets the water and more in on the top and rots from the top rather than the bottom. There we go. That's all my helpers have disappeared, but it's time to start the electric fencing, so... I'm going to put one big post in here and there'll be little posts going out around the new sewage system and all the way along the wall so that we can stop them jumping up over the ha-ha for now. Right, so the other end we're coming back to this post here so I've got a corner post there, corner post there and it goes back up the line to where I was just now. So now we're going to run a wire, electric wire from there all the way around to get a nice straight line and put all the small posts in up through. There we are, there's our nice straight line going all the way up through to be able to put our little posts in. I've got these little 2b2 posts which I had for a show for putting up show fences so I've kept them back but we could use them rather than using proper like insulated stakes so here we are that's what we're going to bang in up through and then put these ones into them banging these in with the iron bar rather than the drivel turn the iron bar up the other way around and use the flat end you can hear the echo yeah so now just putting the insulators on. A bit more Milwaukee toolage. Oh, wrong way. Turn that around. There we go. Perfect. Right, got one strand of wire on the top. Unrolling the second strand of wire now. 
all the way up through. Max is going to clip it all into the. We've got three insulators on each post, like so. Can you show them how to do it, Maxie? So, do like that. I can't really see. Hang on. There we go. Pull okay, it in. on one side, yeah. That clip. Yeah. Pull it through. Pull it through like that. I do. Give it a tug so you make it tight. Nice. Well, there we go. It's all in. And to be fair, that's a pretty straight line. All the way down there for little tiny posts. There's one there in the middle that could do pushing back in a bit. Otherwise, not too bad. Quite happy with that. All the way down through. Winner. So coming to the end of the repairs now, we've just got this fence here, which is tipped out over. So I need to hold that one back up. I'm going to run out of stakes. So I've got some of this sort of 3 by 3 timber, which we'll do for now. Well, three and a half by three and a half. We're going to use the hatchet to cut some points on the bottom. And um, yeah, just drive them in, which should be fine. And yes, before you get to the comments, I'm fully aware they're not tantalised and won't last very long. But it's what I've got. We're being resourceful and just using what we've got. So, yeah, terribly sorry if I offended anyone for using softwood posts which haven't been treated. Right, so that bit up there through is done. Now we've just got to run a piece of barbed wire through there. Something jumping up on there. Not the barbed wire makes a great deal of difference to goats. We have found this lovely second-hand bit of mild steel barbed wire, which is horrible. Like... 12, 15 years ago when I was doing this as a job, stuff like that, I'd be like, nope, not touching it. Nope, no chance. But it's now it's my own property. Absolutely fine. Funny how things change, eh? Right, have another go, Suzanne. Still got a strimmer on this on you, look. <laughs> All right, how's, how's it going there? Gaining? Okay, Probably a bit high there, I reckon, Dana. You want to come not down? Really. Yeah, that'll do. All I'm right, just don't carry a lot of things here. Okay, and then they push it in. You hold that bit there. I got it now, let go. And then push it in like that. And then round again. I couldn't. I oh, no, hang on, I've got to get tight yet. Yeah. Hang on. Here we go. I, can't, I can't film this bit. There we go. Let me see that. There we are. There's a barb over the top. All the way through. Nice. Right, we're running out of daylight, so we're just going to have a look at this now, make sure we've got everything we need, and then tomorrow morning we will connect it up. So there was our electric fencer. We got that sorted last night. That's fine. And we've got the old case battery, which I've charged up. There's 13.1 volts in it, so it should be absolutely fine. And here's our fence. Let's get it connected. Right, we're all clipped onto the battery. The fence is down here. Hopefully the goats won't try and go through it because obviously it's electric, so it's far enough away. There we are, you see it's, it's clicking now. Green, with earth just on the ground anchor there, which should be fine. And then it clips on the fence back there, look. Nice. Right, who's testing it? Me, me. Are you both testing it? Yeah. Hello, Maxie. Test it again. Feel it? Yeah. Yeah? Feel a little tingle through the grass. <laughs> so on the end, you can see what I've done with the wires. I've just gone along, back, down, and then back again. You can just have three plain strands and just link them all three together on the ends. So this way, just so I didn't have to cut any wire and rejoin it. So that'll be fine. Right, go, Ease, it's time for you to move. We have Molly on the quad bike behind us. Max and Mummy are going to lead them. And I'm going to film. So I've got the easy job. Halford one, the others follow him, hopefully. <laughs> this is hilarious. Right, they're in. That wasn't too stressful, I promise. Just taking them for a walk around their new field. We're here walking back, and um, yeah, they're coming back with us. <laughs> you thought they'd stay in the woods, wouldn't you, really? Right, so we just introduced them to the electric fence just to see if it worked. and. Um, Billy decided to go straight through it, which wasn't great, so we're just going to put another strand now along the bottom. Come on in, boys! <laughs> right, we've got five strands now instead of three. We thought we'd put the extra one in as well. Done then, or not? Right, so the goats seem happy, don't they, Max? Yeah. And they've got a massive, great big field to play in now, so hopefully they stay in there. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio, bye. Bye.